Thanks for tuning in, guys, to the Pastor Lawn Ginger, and this is my lawn. First things first, so let's go take the random walkthrough so you can see where we're starting. Now, as you can see along the curbing, everything looks like it's starting to green up, which tells me that around the curb is a lot warmer than everywhere else. And then we still have these funky lines from last year that we're dealing with that striping. Um, I know it was uh, at this point, bad batch of sod. If you look at my previous episodes, that caused a severe shallow root issue. Now, as we get further in here, you can see this area is a lot um, dingier, if you will. It's more brown than all the other sections. Uh, I scalped the heck out of this lawn uh, in one of the videos, so that's not surprising. But this area is the area that gets full sun all the time. So I'm really gonna have to put a lot of focus on watering. Now, coming around the back, in the back that I did not scalp, I've got a couple of issues going on. Um, I've got some nutrient deficiencies. It looks like the soil is a little tied up, tied up. But the major issues you can see, it's the dog urine spots. The uh, ammonia release from the dog urine is causing really good growth. But I got all that excess dog urine and I have new dog urine spots because, hey, dogs, we love them. But the issue at hand is, is the salt that is causing the damage and it's plugging everything up. So we're gonna have to, uh, to treat that too. Now, this portion of the backyard, oddly enough, I am having a massive watering issue. My French drain over here is, uh, was not properly routed out to any sort of drainage source and whatever they put in is causing water to pool up underneath the trampoline. And that's why I'm really not getting much growth back here. As you can see, the dogs really did a lot of damage over the winter time too. Now there's a long list <laughs> for everything I got going on. Um, the primary issue is I need to figure out proper drainage in the backyard and along the fence line. We're trying to figure out if along this fence line there's some sort of a breakage going on on the neighbor side over by the shed because this whole area along the fence line gets sopping wet with about three to four inches of standing water. So uh, lawn problems. This one's been tough to figure out. Um, so today we're really just going to focus on the front yard. Um, the application is going to be the same for the backyard, but we're really just going to go through the front. Hit me up in the comments if you have any specific questions about the back. All right, guys, it is the end of March, and who would have thought the soil temperatures stayed this low for so long? Well, let's go take a look and see what those soil temperatures are up to. So I've got my uh, Bed Bath & Beyond thermometer. Let's see where we're at here. And sometimes it takes a little bit to get the proper temperature in the soil. And I like to go about three inches down. That's why I like this one. I get instant results on what it's telling me. So we're below 55 degrees and it looks like we're gonna settle somewhere around 49 would be my guess. Um, Pre-emergence, great time to apply the pre-emergence. We're well uh, before the germination of crabgrass. Now my short term goal is going to be pretty simple. Uh, we want to wake up the microbes, get the bacteria going so we can get a healthy lawn going. Now every lawn out there needs some sort of form of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, um, of which it has an unlimited supply in the soil and with the rainfall. So the focus today is, is increasing carbons, getting down a usable form of nitrogen uh, to kind of wake stuff up and we're gonna attack some of the dog urine uh, with calcium. Choosing the right nitrogen is extremely important. Our nitrogens are in three different categories. You've got your urea, your ammonium nitri nitrogen, and your nitrate nitrogens. Now, I'm going to be using an ammonium nitrate because it's early on in the spring and I have a high pH. Now, if I was early on in the spring, but I don't need to decrease my pH, I would use the nitrate nitrogen. Now, I'm going to avoid urea because I don't have the bacteria present to break it down. The soil temperatures aren't high enough and you're gonna lose up to 50% of the urea 
that you put down. So that's why I don't like to use it. Urea has its purpose though. It works great as a supplement and I usually use it in a 60-40 split as we get into the season. But as of right now, ammonium sulfate is gonna be my best thing. It's going to decrease the pH temporarily. It's not gonna stay that way for very long, but it's gonna be a perfect growing medium. But it's also gonna help increase soil temperature temporarily as well. And as you can see, the soil temperature along the uh, perimeter edges right there uh, is higher and that's why the grass is greener. So I just want everything else to kind of boost up. Now the other thing is Kentucky bluegrass is kind of uh, finicky. It needs a kickstart. Now my weapon of choice is going to be the best brand Nitro King. Now you, you viewers at home, you've asked me this a bunch of times, hey what's available in my area? And the bottom line is it doesn't really matter. The only thing that really matters is the numbers. I got 16% ammoniacal nitrogen, 4% nitrate nitrogen and then i've got my uh, uh, phosphates my potash my sulfur and iron this is going to help for my root development and this is going to help for, with my overall health and uh, you have to get the uh, phosphorus down now because it takes a little bit to get into the roots now i'm going to add additional <laughs> phosphorus with this 12 12 12. Now, the thing i don't like about this 12 12 12 but kind of works to my advantage is the nitrogen is is just basically not half 50 percent of it's not going to be available to the ground because out of this 12 percent 3.8 percent is ammonia nitrate and the rest of it's urea so i know that 50 percent of that is not going to be available because the bacteria will not break it down into an ammonia uh, ammonium source so the nice thing is is i tackled uh all of our primary fertilizers are nitrogen phosphorus potassium in that one mix but i didn't get all my secondaries and you really only need secondaries occasionally our secondaries is going to be a calcium source magnesium and the sulfur is already in that bag of the best brand too now to tackle my um, calcium I'm gonna use gypsum because I'm in a high pH for those of you guys in a low pH and you need to go up you're gonna want to end up using a lime now the calcium source that I have comes in a bag called the soil conditioner but it's also coupled with humates which I really like because it acts as a soil conditioner now the one thing I like about soil conditioners uh, in general or humates in specific is the carbon uh, availability for the soil. It helps with microbe activity, uh, but it also helps with oxygen and uh, air transfer up and down in the soil, but they also hold seven times their weight in water. So you get a lot of benefits out of these. Now, putting down humates at any given time of the year is always a benefit, but I wanna make sure that we start stacking it to make sure that we have availability in the soil later on. Now the ultimate question is how many pounds of nitrogen is the ginger gonna put down? Well guys, I do not like to exceed more than half a pound of nitrogen on my initial application. Um, a couple of reasons for that. The more nitrogen you put down, the more salt is gonna be there. Uh, there's also only so much that the plant is going to use and absorb. And I like to do more frequent applications. Now in the future, we're gonna cut that way down to a quarter of a pound. Um, I'm not really into a lot of growth. Uh, it makes it so you have to mow your lawn twice as much. And frankly, just like steroid users, if you do it too much and you pump steroids into this lawn, it can increase the potential for fungus. Calibration is always key. We wanna make sure that we know what we're putting down. So I'm gonna look at the label because I'm using a spiker spreader. It's one of my favorite spreaders. I always get the most use out of spiker spreaders. Um, as you can see here on the label, it requires us to use a 4.9 on the setting. So I've got that dialed in. Now, with that said, my total amount of nitrogen that I really wanna focus on over the entire season it's gonna be somewhere between two and a half pounds and three and a quarter pounds of N. That's usually what I average. Now, I'm gonna let the lawn dictate what it needs. Um, and your needs are gonna be higher or lower depending on your area. And uh, also if you're mowing long or short. So hit me up in the comments if you want the ginger to stay long or stay short because that's gonna dictate the rest of the season. Next on the list is the application of the soil conditioner. Now, I really like the local soil conditioner that I get. Uh, it's high in humates and it's also high in gypsum, which were pH high. 
And so it's an all-in-one product. I think the one bag is rated around 10,000 square feet. I'm just using the rest of the bag. I, I don't really care about the label rates on soil conditioners because you can't really get too many humates. You just can't. Now our calcium is considered moderate to high in our area, but the soil's a little tied up in my opinion. So that's gonna release the calcium and the sulfur ions for color later down the road. Now my final application is gonna be using that 12-12-12. I just had it sitting in the back. It needs to go somewhere, might as well go on the lawn. And I didn't feel like my phosphorus levels uh, in this mix were high enough for my needs. The phosphorus is gonna take a little bit of time to get down to the root bases to promote that growth. So I'm trying to get it in about a month early, which isn't gonna be enough in my opinion. Um, so I might have some seed heads later on during the season. Um, so I put it down at about three pounds per thousand, which pushed me well under the recommended dose. If I wanted to get to a pound of nitrogen, it's just 100 divided by 12. Um, and that gives me my pound of N. But the urea, we're gonna lose half the urea anyway. And that's probably gonna put my uh, P range right around probably a four and a half to a five, uh, which is what I'm looking for. Now, I'm sure you've noticed I've been focusing mainly on macronutrients and you're probably thinking, Ginger, where's the micros? Well, I put a heavy dose last fall that's already gonna be available, but the bottom line is, is the microbes aren't going, the soil temps are so low. Primary issue that we have here at hand is just getting everything to start growing, getting that kickstart. All right, guys, really appreciate you guys tuning in. Keep in mind, this is a regular segment. So you are going to see the results week by week by week. If you guys have any questions or concerns, hit me up in the comments below. Tell me your favorite joke today. Love to hear it. Have a great day. Keep it clean, guys. Bye.